Hi, this is Rob Hanley with the Durham Duplicate Bridge Club on Tuesday, February the 14th for the 399er game. We have two hands for you today. The first one is number eight. As you can see, I have a six count, so it's pretty clear for me to pass. The robot on my left is open to hard and partners made to take out double. So a bit of one spade by me would show four or more spades, zero to seven points. And a jump to two spades would show eight to 11 with four or more points or four or more spades rather. Uh, in this case, I have a clear one spade bid. Partner has jumped to four clubs. So this is pretty unusual for a, an overcall situation. My partner has what's called a strong double 18 plus. They have shortness in clubs and they have a spade raise. This is a splinter bid and their hand is so strong that they feel they can make game opposite of potential zero count on my part. Uh, so that means they, they have one of two kinds of hands. They either have a two club opening with spades or they have a hand which has become a two club opening uh, with support for spades based on some additional distribution, such as the club situation. So I have to decide, am I looking for slam? Now, it seems kind of strange to look for slam when you only have a six high card hand. But let's bear in mind that partner already knew I had that when they made the splinter bid looking for slam. So I have two of the top three spades, and I also have the 10 and the nine of spades to boot, and I have a singleton heart. So I think the answer is kind of, yeah, I am looking for slam if partner really has what they promised. So I'm going to cue bid four hearts. This promises first or second round control in hearts. So that would be the ace, a void, a singleton, uh, or the king. Uh, and indicates that I'm not a zero count and that I don't have a lot of wasted values in clubs. That would be a bad thing for me to have. So I said something partner like they're bidding four no trump, he bid 1430 and shows, uh, in this case, I'm bidding five clubs showing one or four key cards. Uh, and I have just the one ace. And partner is going. So let's see what they've got. All right, so um, let's not worry too much about the high card points in this hand. Let's actually look at tricks. So usually when you're uh, playing a difficult hand in particular, you tend to choose one hand and make them the master hand and decide how to play the contract. Usually you choose the hand with the longest trump. Uh, you can do it the other way around. In this case, I could make it the dummy, but it's a little more complicated most of the time. So let's think about how this is going to go. Clearly, my partner's um, outlook on six spades is based on the void in clubs and the potentially running diamonds, along from with some indication for me that I, I had you know good spades and, and second round control of hearts. So um, if I draw all the trump and I start running the diamonds, then I will get and the diamond set up, I will get four pitches on the running diamonds. That would allow me to discard four clubs, which would leave me with one club in my hand, which I need to rough. Um, so that's probably the best line of play is to account for roughing a club and setting up the diamonds. If, if it's, it's possible that the uh, diamonds don't split, they're 4-1, then it's essential that I rough a club first because I won't get four diamond pitches. I will only get three diamond pitches, and then I'll have a losing club at the very end. So I'm going to start by letting this come around my own hand. Take that trick. And I'm going to rough a club right now. Uh, and I'll just throw a, a small one in there. Now I'm going to cash the king of spades. And notice that the spades split 3-1, so the robot on my right had three spades. So here's the... Uh, uh, the important point, I'm going to draw the last spade. And now I'm going to start running the diamonds. I have the ace of hearts as an entry back to the dummy in the event that the diamonds don't split three, two, uh, and I have to rough one. Now, the fact that the robot on my left pitched a diamond is good for me. It seems like a strange pitch. Uh, so I'm gonna start running those diamonds. Let's see what happens. And the diamonds are splitting three, two. So in fact, I'm actually going to score all the rest of the tricks and I'm going to make seven. All 
All right, so I took all 13 tricks. Uh, and uh, I have to see, I can't remember the last time I made a slam on this kind of auction in an overcall situation, um, let alone had the potential to bid and make seven spades. Um, it is possible to bid seven spades, but you would have to be playing a convention called Grand Slam Force. Uh, and I really don't expect anybody short of an expert to actually bid it. Um, but now that we can see all four hands, there are a couple of extra points here. The first is uh, looking at my partner's hand and recognizing that they have upgraded that hand from just some random 17 count based on the void and the nice diamonds to being a strong double. Secondly, when they found a spade fit with me, they added five points for the void, which put them into two club territory and potential slam interest. And you can see on this hand that that was well founded. Uh, secondly, I think that the South robot on my right should have raised to two hearts. They have four hearts uh, and they have five points. Um, I don't know that that would make much difference in fi us finding slam. I think we still would, but um, I can't understand why the robot passed on that. Uh, and the lead of the spade by the robot on my left was really an effort to cut down a cross rough situation. Uh, on this hand, it really didn't make any difference at all. All right, we're going to switch to the next hand now. This one is number 17, and I am once again West. Now on this hand, we are going to be playing the two over one bidding system. So let's see how that starts. Partners opened one spade, and the, the foundation of two over one is that if I bid a lower ranking suit at the two level, I'm promising a full opening bid and that we are going to game someplace. In this case, I have a clear two heart bid. I have 16 high card points, six hearts. I only needed five. And it just says we're going to game someplace. Partners raised to three hearts. Now, part of the uh, reason people play two over one is, it, is that it allows you to explore for slam uh, much easier than standard American. In this case, three hearts shows a non-minimum. If my partner had you know, 10, 11, 12, even 13 points, they would just bid four hearts. So three hearts really promises me 14 plus high card points and is not saying no to slam interest. Now they could have 18 points, I don't know. Uh, so how do I proceed? I use Q bids here. In this case, I'm going to bid four clubs because that is the cheapest ace or king I have up the line from three hearts. and partner has signed off in four hearts. So generally that means my partner didn't like my four club Q bid. There may, it may be that we have a problem in spades or that they were being kind and letting me holding the auction out for me. They really just don't have anything else to say. In any event, they're placing the contract and I'm gonna go along with that. All right, so now I, I can see the problem. We're missing the ace and king of spades. So it was the fact that I did not Q bid three spades before I bid four clubs that told my partner I didn't have the ace or king of spades. And so that's why they signed off in four hearts because they know that we can't make it on a spade lead. So I'm going to start by taking that king of clubs. And I'm going to... Uh, cash or a heart to my king and I'm actually going to rough uh, the jack of clubs while I still can. I'm going to rough it high with the ace of hearts. Then I'm going to cast the ten of hearts and I'm going to cross over with the ace of diamonds. There's not much chance of a rough going on there and cash that queen of hearts. In case I had to do that in case the trump had split poorly. Uh, and I'm going to play that 10 of diamonds to the king, play the queen of diamonds, discarding a spade. And as you can see, I'm only going to lose one spade now. Let's give it to them now. And the rest are mine. All right, so uh, I managed to make six, but 
I think this illustrates how in the two over one bidding system, you have a slight advantage in that you can stay away from uh, slams that don't make. Um, now, the, the flip side is that, of course, this auction should have suggested to the robot that the problem was in spades, and I think they should have led a spade. Um, however, uh, I'll take my six. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time. Thanks.